Welcome to Salvation Celebration, a presentation of Christ for All People Ministries, going into all the world to spread the never-changing good news that God loves you and wants you to be saved, teaching the Word of God, and serving others. And now here is Jim McCarroll, Minister of the Gospel. Hi, and welcome to today's television broadcast. We're so glad that you've decided to join us today. We've got an exciting program for you. I just want to say that Judy and I have been out visiting churches and working on the crusade there and, you know, talking to folks and visiting churches. It's so good to hear so many people that are watching the program and, and are being blessed by the TV show. And, and I just want you to know that really blesses our heart to, to hear that, that, the, that the ministry is getting to y'all. I also wanted to mention Clyde Wright, who's in the nursing home in Blairsville. He's a, he's a faithful watcher of the program. Asking the folks to pray for him and Mary Ann Wright. Folks, just let's pray for those people. Lift them up in prayer. We believe in prayer on this program. And, uh, you know, we've met so many people, we can't mention everybody by name, but I really felt led by the Lord to mention Clyde Wright and his family and pray for them. And folks, go by the nursing home and visit them people. Um, you know, it's a wonderful thing. You know, the Bible teaches us to go and visit those that are sick and those that are in prison and in uh, Matthew 25. But anyway, folks, let's get right into the program. Clyde, we love you. I'm praying for your healing, brother. But let's get right on into the program here. I want to talk to you this morning out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm going to start reading in verse 1. And it says, and, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strives and divisions, and are ye not carnal and walk as men? I just want to stop you right there and understand that when you're talking about the things of the Bible, you've got to understand that Jesus taught us that you must be born again. And not, it's not, you can't go into your mother's womb and be born again, but it's a spiritual rebirth. You're born again in the spirit. And the way you get born again in the spirit is that you have to really confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what Romans uh, 10 verse 9 says. Now, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's Romans 10, 9, and 10, the two verses right there. So, folks, that's how you get born again. At that point, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God, that's the that's interchangeable word, Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost, um, it, it, it enters into your heart. You're born again. You're a new creature. You're not, a, you're not an old thing. Uh, you, you are absolutely are a new creation in Christ. You're a new creature. And uh, all things are of God. And all things are made new by God. So we didn't really understand what it's talking about here. But when you're born again, the Bible's teaching us here that we are babies in Christ. We're babes in Christ. And so just as a baby can't, you know, you don't go and get a, a steak or, or some kind of a meat and feed a baby, you feed it milk. And so if you're born again as a new Christian, it's very important that you uh, get a part of a good discipleship program in a church. Uh, get, follow, follow this program even also in addition to going to church because we're going to feed you the word of God and we always try in every show to, to include some milk for the babes and meat for the people who've been saved a long time. But you got to understand when you're first born again, you really need to, you should desire the milk of the word, which is the most basic things of the faith. You, should, you need to learn about why you need to be baptized. If you're born again, you should uh, be baptized um, and that signifies that, that as Christ died and is raised Again, so we die in the water and we're raised unto new life. That's just a basic understanding of what baptism is. So we understand what baptism is. That's part of the milk of the word, and that's your first works. And, and then you need to start understanding to grow as a babe. And, and a, baby, you, a baby can't feed itself. A baby can't cook food. A baby can't go out to the grocery store by itself. So it's very important that, that when you're a babe in Christ that, that you sit under good, solid teaching. And, and not the doctrines of men, not, not uh, somebody's theological statement, but under the word of God and becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people who could teach you a lot about this Bible, and, and it's all good. I'm, I'm not against that by any means, but you've got to be under a disciple of Christ to become a disciple of Christ. And a disciple of Christ is somebody who can share their faith with others. A mature believer, a mature uh, Christian, or in this case, someone who's eat, eating the meat of the word, can share their faith with other people. And that's a disciple of Christ. 
And when you're at that point, then you can start making other disciples. You can mentor them. You can teach them the word. And a lot of times in America, folks, we're making church members and not Christ's disciples. There's a big difference. You can be a member of a church and be totally lost. There's people all over America that are members of churches. They're, they're very well-meaning people. They love people. They're kind. They do good works. They're very sincere. And, but they have never had the born-again experience of when the Holy Spirit comes in their heart and makes them a new creature. So let's take a minute in review, folks, on what we've already covered. So when you're born again, the Spirit of God comes into your heart. That makes you a new creature. All things are new and all things are of God. The Bible's describing that as a babe in Christ or a baby in Christ. And just as a baby requires the milk uh, for its nourishment, so we desire and need the milk of the Word of God. And that's where you need to be part of a good discipleship program, where you need a really good teacher, a really good pastor, or somebody who can mentor you in the Word to grow you into a disciple because... Folks, you've got to grow, and, and as a baby, you have to be fed. A baby cannot feed itself. A baby needs to be fed the word, spoon-fed the word. And I've noticed that under this ministry, as long as we've done it, that the most successful results have been the people that we've mentored you know, on a regular basis and taught the word in Bible study and that they watch the program and they start to grow because the word of God starts to prosper them and they start growing up. As you grow in Christ, you start growing up. And, and Ephesians chapter 4 starts talking about how we're growing into the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. That's why he gave the different types of ministers in Ephesians chapter 4 so that we would grow to be like Jesus Christ. But as we're growing, the responsibility of you being fed starts to fall more and more upon yourself. For example, you don't feed a teenager uh, from a bottle of milk. You, that's, that's not how that's done. They have a responsibility to help feed themselves. Just as an adult has a responsibility to feed themselves. You know, a small child, we might, we might cut the meat for them and help them eat that, and we might help feed them, but as you grow up, you start to feed yourself. And so that's what the Bible's talking about in these scriptures. Very important that we understand this because so many people get frustrated they quit on church. I hear it quite a bit. You know, well, brother, you know, my pastor just wasn't feeding me anymore. No, the reason the pastor's not feeding you anymore is because you've grown past the milk and now it's upon you to feed yourself. You got to understand where I'm coming from here. That's why you need to read your Bible daily. This is the meat and the milk of God. From milk to, to meat, from the basic things of God to the most deep things of God, it's all covered here in the Bible. Now, if you, if you haven't been born again and you don't have the Spirit of God, when you read this word, it's not going to prosper. You're not going to understand it. You got to be born again first. And, you know, the way you do that is you have to believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead. If you don't believe that, and if you don't receive that and confess him as Lord, you're never going to be born again. You can be all around church. There's a lot of people who are well-meaning people. They attend church. They're members. They've never been born again. They're not disciples, but I mean, they're faithful. They pay their tithes. They serve. They help others. They love people. But you know what? That does not make you a Christian. That does not make you a disciple. What makes you a Christian is when you... When the Holy Spirit draws you and then you, you, you repent from your sins, from your old way of thinking, your old life that you lived, you repent from that. And when you do that, you let the Holy Ghost come into your heart and you're born again. You're a new creature. And if that has ever happened to you, there is nothing anybody can ever say to talk you out of that. Folks, we got a lot of people who, who've prayed prayers in churches and, you know, in, in, in around the world, and they think they're Christians by their head knowledge. Head knowledge is not what makes you a Christian. It's heart knowledge of God, the Spirit of God dwelling in you. People who really have that Spirit will not deny Christ. They will sell out 100% and give their whole life unto Him. It's the difference between becoming a church member and being a disciple of Christ. And when I say church member, I'm talking about the modern thought process of church membership. Uh, which is basically you come up, shake a preacher's hand or get on some rolls or attend some class and now you're a member of the church and now you can vote and whatever they're doing and all that. But that's not what the Bible's talking about when it talks about being a member of the church or being a member of Christ's body. I want to take a minute right here and I want to read to you some more scripture. I'm going to read to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and I'm going to read in verse 12. First, the body is one and hath many members, and all are members of that one body, being many are one body. So also was Christ. Boy, that's a tongue twister right there in the King James language. But basically what it's telling you is, is, that, the, is that the church is called the body of Christ. It, it, it's used that in, interchangeably, the body of Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, whether we, we have all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. 
Folks, that's what you've got to understand, that the body of Christ is the church. He's the head of the body, the Bible teaches. The, the head of the body, the church, is Jesus Christ. He's the head. We're the members. Now, you've got to understand that the body has many members, and it's going to start talking to us here in just a second about how one, one part of the body can't say it don't need the other part. So let's read on. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, Am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now God has set members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. I want to say that right there again in verse 18. But now God hath set every member, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. Folks, when you're born again, you're set in the body where God wants you to be. And I skipped over a whole bunch of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 right there because it first starts talking about the different spiritual gifts. Let me go back and read that. And a lot of people have gotten jealous over other people's gifts. And well, just because I don't have that gift, really what they're saying is I don't believe in that other gift. But, but let me explain something to you. There's many different gifts in the body of Christ. And God's designed us all to work together. It's very important that we love one another and we work together. So I'm going to back up now that I've told you what the church is. It's the body of Christ, and we're all members, and we've been placed in it where he wants us. He also gives us the gifts that he wants. Not everybody has a gift to do what I do, and I probably don't have the gifts to do what some of y'all can do. And, and if it's a gift of God, it works effortlessly in your life. It's not something that's it's work. It's just something that flows through you. It's just automatic, and so that's how you know it's a gift of God. But I'm going to start reading 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. There's a lot of people that are shying away from this part of the Bible, but folks, we got to we got to go by the whole Bible. Uh, we've really got to go by, especially the New Testament. That's our rule of faith and practice as Christians. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. That's what it's what I just told you in the beginning of the show. If the Holy Ghost is not dealing with your heart, you can't make Jesus Lord. <laughs> You can say you know about him, you can have head knowledge of him, but he's not going to be Lord in your heart unless the Holy Ghost deals with your heart. Now, there are diversities of gift, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Folks, if you're born again, every man is given the spirit. But by that spirit are different gifts. Well, we've got to understand this. We've got to get over some of the carnal, carnal thinking that, that we talked about earlier in, in, in the scripture there when I read to you about um, you know, people being carnal and, and, and striving and envying one another. Folks, we've got to get over that. There's some people that can sing like an angel. There's some people that preach real well. There's some people that teach real well. Um, but there are many different gifts. But we all have the same spirit. If it's the Holy Spirit, it's all the same spirit. For to one is given spirit by the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. And folks, this just goes on and on into the scripture. To another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to other diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. And we're here we are back at verse 12 again. For the body is one, hath many members, and all members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Folks, we're all baptized into the body by the same spirit. That's the church. And a lot of times when I was saying about church membership a while ago, that's far cry from the biblical definition of being a member of Christ's body. Being a member of Christ's body, you got in it the minute you went to an old-fashioned altar, wherever, whether that might have been in jail, it might be in your living room, it might be at the altar of a church, but you went forward because God was dealing with your heart. You humbled yourself, you repented from your sin, the Holy Ghost came into your heart. That's how you got baptized into the church. Realize that Ephesians 4 also teaches us that there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's not talking about water baptism. It's talking about baptism in the Spirit. Where you got the Holy Ghost in your heart, you're born again. That's what we're talking about here. Okay, let's go on and read a little more into the scripture here. Um, back to verse 18. I'm going over this because it's so important that you get this. You got to get, get a hold of this. But now hath God set, mem set the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. Folks, you set pe God sets people where he wants them. And a lot of times people get frustrated. I've watched churches that have an agenda or a program or, you know, even this ministry. Sometimes we try to sometimes put people in positions that God's not called them to. Very important that there's 
everything that's done, the, 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 the man running the camera right now is, is as important, if not more important, than, than the guy sitting in front of the microphone. You've got to understand, God gives honor, we're fixing to learn, on the unseen parts of the body. Um, so it's very important that everything that you're doing is what you're called to do and, and what gifting he's given you. Okay, let's keep on reading. I'm going to start again. Verse 19. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now there are many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more than those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. <clears throat> and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and the uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together and hath given more abundant honor to the part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Just take, for example, folks, take American culture. American culture, people get all kind of facelifts and all kind of plastic surgery and all that. That's the comely parts of the body. That's the beautiful parts, right? You understand what I'm saying? But it's a lot more important that your heart works <laughs> that you can't see that may be not so pretty to look at. If you cut to open your body right now, the parts inside there are going to be yucky to look at. They're not beautiful to look at, but they're very important. Very important to the operation of the body. That's what Jesus is teaching us here. He's teaching us that you know, a lot of people want to be the guy with the microphone because they think that's where the glory's at. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're called to work behind the scenes, maybe you're a deacon, maybe you're an elder, maybe you just serve in the church, but, but you know, we're all called to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. We're all called to, be, to grow into maturity, to share our faith, to let our light shine. But I'm going to tell you, it's the people behind the scenes where God is putting great honor upon them. They put more abundant honor on the people behind the scenes because, in, in a sense, those of us that are sometimes in the public view, we, we're getting some of our reward when people thank us or tell us, you know, that we're being blessed. But you know what? You don't see the people behind the scenes that make this whole thing operate. And they're just, they're just as important putting this stuff on the Internet and putting it on television and, 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 and doing all the things that you can't see here on television. I'm telling you right now, folks, it's all important especially the unseen parts. Don't get down and depressed because nobody's noticed you. Because if nobody's noticed you and nobody's praising you, you're not getting your reward here. You're getting it in heaven. There's a principle that Jesus taught us. When you do alms, when you give, when you, when you serve the Lord, you're not doing it to draw attention to yourself like the hypocrites did. The hypocrites loved to pray, and they would sound a trumpet before themselves, and they would draw attention to how much they were given and how holy they were. and you know They did all kind of stuff you know, to draw attention to themselves. And Jesus said, you got your honor now. Um, but if you're doing it out of the right spirit and you're doing it as unto the Lord, if no man ever notices you, I guarantee you, your heavenly father knows right where you're at. He knows right where you're at and he loves you and he's pleased with you. I just want you to know right now that if you're serving the Lord with all you have, you know, you might be in a nursing home, maybe you're in jail, but you're doing everything you can to serve the Lord and love people and, and love God. That's where you got, that's how you can start telling that you that you really are a disciple, that you love God and you love people. And, and you, you've decided in your life that I'm going to be a disciple of Christ. I'm not happy just being a member of a church, having my name on a church roll somewhere. I want to follow Jesus. And I'm going to die to myself, and I'm going to start my new life. And it's never too late to start that. You start your new life for Jesus Christ, and you let him work in your heart. You follow him wherever he leads you. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I've said it on this program before because, you know what? Because he'll take you places that you probably wouldn't go on your own. There's a lot of places the Lord has sent us that, that we would have never thought to go there on our own, but it was very important. It was a divine appointment to meet somebody who needed encouragement. Maybe somebody needs to hear about Jesus that they've never heard it. Maybe they've never met a real Christian. You'd be surprised that Christianity gets spun around and, and treated like it's some big hate, hate mongering thing, but it's not. Christianity's built on love. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. Folks, you've got to understand, God loves us. And if the Holy Ghost is in your heart, you're going to love people. That's just all there are to it. And if you love people, then you're going to forgive people. And if you're going to forgive people, you need to forget about it. You need to let it go. Folks, I'm talking to somebody right now on TV. You've not let it go. There's people, I'm telling you right now, by the Spirit of God, there are people watching this show right now that you've still got bitterness against people. You've got to let that go, not for their sake, for your sake. Jesus taught us that if we don't forgive others, then we can't be forgiven by our Heavenly Father. It's just that simple, folks. It's very serious about forgiveness. So let me go back and read you some more scripture right here. I'm going to go down and read verse 
1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Oh boy. How about that? You are the body of Christ and members in particular. That's some wonderful news right there. <clears throat> that means that if Jesus Christ is the only one that could get you into church, if God sent it, his Holy Ghost is the only one that could get you into church, there's no man can kick you out of it. They may tell you you ain't invited back to that congregation. They may give you the right foot of fellowship and, and maybe don't want nothing to do with you, especially when they say you're growing. There's the envy. We just read that in the very beginning over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 about the people who were carnal. They were envy and they were striving against each other. Folks, you should read the Bible right there and not to uh, find an excuse to sin. Read the Bible to help crucify your flesh. And that's really, the, that's really what the Bible teaches in this situation. We've got to crucify our flesh. And I just want to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 again. I'm going to reread that. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's a lot of people who claim the name of Christ. Some of you well-meaning folks go to church, never been born again. Some of you have been born again, but you're still carnal. You're still like a babe in Christ, envying, striving, going to give everybody a piece of your mind and not preferring your brother and sister before yourself. And I'm going to tell you right now, that really is a miserable life to live as a Christian. You know, Christianity is an abundant life. It's living a life free from the cares of this world. If you're still tore up from the floor up about the cares of this world, Folks, I'm telling you, you've missed the, the whole point of discipleship. You've missed the whole point of getting the Holy Ghost in your heart, of making Jesus Lord. Because if he's Lord, he's going to take care of it. Now, we do our part just to be obedient, but I'm going to tell you right now, that's how we've got to go with this thing. I want to go right on down here and read in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 5. Who then is, wait a minute, I'm going to start in 4. For a while one saith, I am Paul, another I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God gives the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labors. For we are labors together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's builder. You are God's building. Folks, let's look at this right now. And you think, well, I'm not saying that now, but there's people all over that say, well, I'm a Baptist and you're a Methodist and, well, I'm a Methodist and you're a Church of God or whatever. Pick anything like that and we're doing the same thing that they were doing there because P Paul was ministering, Apollos was ministering, and they were, they were working together and maybe one got saved by Paul and another one by Apollos and now they were envying and striving against one another and trying to outcompete one another. Folks, you've got to understand, there's one church and we've got to start looking at, at what we do for Christ from Christ's point of view, from God's point of view, that we are co-laborers together with him. That's what it's teaching. And you know what? There's a lot of people that watch this show that get fed the word of God, maybe come under conviction. They go to another pastor, um, to a pastor of a church, or they come into church and they get saved, or they come to a crusade and they get saved, or maybe they come to the crusade, the word gets sown into their heart. Later on, they go to a church and get saved. You know what? That's how God designed it all to work. We're all working together in this thing. We need to rejoice. We're not competing with each other, folks. We're not envious of one another. If we're going to be Christ's disciples, we need to love one another. That's what he said. Men will know you by the fact that you love one another. He also said, if you're mine, you'll keep my commandments. And I just want to just, just remind everybody right now that what a wonderful sa Savior we serve. He's a great God. He loves us. I'm going to tell you folks right now, it don't matter what you're going through down here on earth. Maybe you're going through sickness and strife and having a hard time. And you know what? Jesus said in this world, you'll have tribulations, but be of good cheer. He said, I've overcome the world. Folks, that's shouting ground right there. You ought to be praising God right there to know that Jesus Christ has overcome the world. And if the spirit of God dwells in us, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is going to raise us up too. And you know what? That's such good news. That's why it's called the gospel. Did you know that gospel means good news? And I just want to issue an invitation right now. Maybe you're watching this show. Maybe you're just wondering, man, why am I watching this guy? But I'm going to tell you right now, maybe you've never made Jesus your Lord. You've probably never even heard the gospel before. But I'm sharing it with you right now that Jesus loves you. He died for you. He had to pay for your sins. You can't pay for them. You don't want to pay for your sins. You'll either die in your sins or you'll make Jesus Lord. And you might as well just go on ahead and do that right now. And the way you do that is simply just humble yourself before God and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. And you need to say that and mean that and believe that he really will forgive you. Folks, he'll forgive your sin. Not only forgive them, he'll pay for them. You don't have to worry about sin no more. You make Jesus Lord. Say, Lord, forgive me. 
I humble myself before you. I believe, Jesus, that you died for my sins, that you were crucified, that you were raised from the dead, that you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. And you know what? I believe that in my heart, and I'm confessing that with my mouth. Folks, if you said that prayer and you meant that, now just say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Do you let the Holy Ghost come into your heart, the Spirit of God in your heart? That's that warm feeling. That's that fire of God coming in. It's not a painful thing. It's a wonderful thing. And you know what? If you've been, if you backslid on God, if you're not where you used to be, and you used to be close to God, you know what? It's time. It's a good time to come back to the Lord. Just, just open up your heart to Him. If you got saved once, you know how to get back to Him. You may have to work a little harder to get back to Him because you've kind of run off into the world. But I'm going to tell you right now. Give Him your whole heart today. Just ask Him to forgive you. Just change. Just repent. Change your mind. That's what repentance means. It means I'm changing my mind. I'm going to go follow Jesus. I'm going to be a disciple. Folks, I just want to encourage you right now. What a great God we serve. If you said that prayer, there's a telephone number on the screen. There's information on how to contact us. I just want you to know how much we love you. If the show's blessing you, consider being a monthly partner. Pray for us on a regular basis. If you want to send in an offering or something, that's fine also. But we just want you to know that we do this because we love you and we want to see souls saved and people to be encouraged. Until next week, I'm Jim with Christ for All People Ministries. Keep your life on track with God by watching Salvation Celebration. Christ for All People Ministries helped me get saved and changed my life. If you want to see more young people like me find Jesus, become a monthly partner. The more partners we have, the more people we can reach. Run your race to win! Please contact us at the address on your screen. Thank you for watching Salvation Celebration, presented by Christ for All People Ministries. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you want to help us, you can pray for us. You can become a monthly partner by giving a love offering of any amount on a monthly basis. You can make a one-time love offering, or you can volunteer to help us. Please contact us at the address on your screen.